It's no secret that I'm a big fan of the airbrush. I think they're a great tool, but I know they're not for everybody. Not everyone has got the space to use them or can afford them, or wants to deal with the hassle of clogs and things like that. But what if you want to paint a big model fast? Well, this video is for you. So this is the Auric Big Pig, aka the Morgrunter. It's a sick model, it's got loads of nice textures which will make it ideal for dry brushing. We've left some of the armor sections off to better get to the fur and skin, and we're going to start off with the model primed in black. The reason for this is that we're going to be working up from dark to light when it comes to our colours, and the reason for that is that we're going to be doing a lot of dry brushing, which naturally adds to the highest layer of the model, and that's going to be the highlights. So we start with our shadows and then work up to our highlight colours. Once the model's primed, we're going to use Thundia Brown and the XXL Artist Opus Serie D brush. This brush is huge and it's going to be a great way to start getting our base coats down on the model and we're also going to be using the texture palette and the dampening pot. If you've watched my dry brush non-metallic metal video, then some of this technique will seem familiar to you, but we're going to start off by putting a couple of drops of water into the dampening pot using the back of the end of the brush. Then we're going to moisten the bristles and brush off any excess on the palette. The reason for this is that it helps to lube up the bristles and let paint leave them brush smoothly, whilst it also protects our brushes in the long run. So we're going to put paint directly onto the palette and then we're going to drag some away with the brush at 90 degrees and then move it in a circular motion to load up the brush. We're not going to remove too much from the brush here as we're going to be base coating to begin with. So once we've got the brush loaded up, we're going to be heavily stippling all over the model to get our base coat in there. Let the paint build up all over, we can go back to the palette if we need more paint. Try not to take too long and let the paint dry in the bristles. If you feel like it is taking a long time, you can clean the brush by moistening it in the dampening pad, rubbing the paint off on the palette and then loading the brush up again. This is a better way of doing it because as the paint dries, obviously as you're brushing it across the model, that's going to make those that horrible chalkiness which we don't really want in dry brushing. So we're going to slip low across the model. You'll notice that some of the deepest recesses still end up quite black, which is fine because those are the shadows. Once we've got our base coat down, we're going to start differentiating between different areas of skin and fur. We're going to build up the, the face and the legs with a fleshy pink. So we're going to take Bugman's Glow and add that to our palette and swap to our medium brush. We can see that there's a bit of a jump between Bondia Brown and the Bugman's Glow. So we're going to make a mix of the two. I'm going to do this by dragging some paints into each other on the palette and giving a good mix together to load a brush up at the same time. We want to do these at about, about 90 degree angle to each other. We're going to start stippling again, quite heavily, to really just leave the thondier brown in the very recesses. Once we've done that, we'll clean and load up the brush. This time we'll go straight for the Bugmans and we're not going to be stippling this time, we're going to be dry brushing with circular motions. So we do want to remove a bit more paint from the brush and we're going to go across all the skin areas and this is going to highlight them. Now we're going to repeat the previous process, but instead of using Thundia Brown and Bugman's Glow, we're going to use Bugman's Glow and Cadian Flesh Tone. Mix those together. This time we're going to still use those circular motions, but pressing onto the model even more lightly, which is just going to hit an even smaller part of those highlight areas.
And once we've done that, we're going to go straight to the Cadian flash tone and repeat the process. Now that the skin tones are done, we're going to move on to the fur. And we're going to follow a similar process, working from the shadows to the highlights. But we're going to start with Thondia Brown and Skaven Blight Dinge, and the XXL brush again. For all of the fur areas, we're going to be dry brushing, and at each incremental step, we're going to be pressing lighter and lighter on the model to just catch more and more of the highlights and less of the shadows. Try to avoid the skin areas as you're dry brushing here. The odd touch won't make too much of a difference overall, but if we can preserve as much of the skin tones we've just produced, then that's better. After that, we're going to work up through the Skaven Blight Dinge into Dawnstone. And as the final step of the fur, we're going to use Ultramarine Grey, which is a really bright bluish grey. It's very important here to make sure that the brush is only loaded up, loaded up as much as is needed to get to the highlights. We really do not want to overdo it here and ruin our nicely established shadows. So with the final step, we're also going to just focus on the most raised area of the fur on the body. So like this curve on the leg here. Once the fur is out of the way, we're going on to painting the details, and that means using our normal brushes. We're going to start with the leather straps. For these, we're going to start base coating them with dried bark, and then we're going to add some deck tan to the wet palette and gradually mix those in together as we work through some simple highlights. We're not going to be doing anything fancy here, just focusing on the shapes of the leather and any scratches in the model, and highlighting those, as well as the edges. For edge highlighting, one key thing to remember is to use the edge of the tip of the brush and gently gliding on the edge to get those nice smooth highlights. Once we've done the leather, it's onto the metals. And we're going to start with a big brush, base coating all of them in lead belcher. Once that's dry, give all the metal a wash with AK Black Knight. This is a really nice wash that gives the metal a dark, grimy feel without being too overboard. At this point, we can glue the armor panels back onto the model. We're going to add some rust here using AK Enamel Wargame washes. Because these are enamel washes, we need to avoid using our good brushes because it will ruin them, and use some cheap synthetic brushes or some old brushes. You can't wash enamel paints out of your brushes with water, so you're also going to need some enamel thinner. And it helps to use these little mixing dishes to wash the brushes in. We're going to start with a dark rust wash, and we're going to use this around all the rivets and in the recesses. We can even make some rusty streaks here if we want to as well. And once we've done that, we'll wash the brush in our thinner, and we'll go to the extreme rust wash. I'm going to apply this a bit more sparingly in the same areas. One of the nice things about enamels is that they have a long working time and can blend really easily together. So working with these two colours, we get a really nice spectrum of rusty colours and just applying them together, mixing them together in those areas, it will go really nicely and you get a nice variety of rusty tones in there. Once again, once we're done with the extreme rust wash, we're going to rinse the brush out with enamel thinner. The model's really starting to come together now and we've not got many details left to do mainly just the inside of the mouth, tusks and teeth. We're going to start with the inside of the mouth because I think if we paint the tusks first, we're more likely to ruin those trying to squeeze inside the mouth, mouth afterwards. So for the mouth, we're going to keep it really simple here and start with Screamer Pink and we're going to stipple that all inside the mouth and along the gums that we can reach easily. Some of the gums are a bit tucked away on this model so we're going to use our normal brush to get to those. Once we've done that, we're going to jump straight to Pink Horror and we're going to give the inside of the mouth and the tongue a good dry brush with that. Try to move perpendicular to the grooves of the tongue with a dry brush. This is generally a good rule of thumb for dry brushing in general because it's going to leave the dark paints in the shadows and just catch the raised areas with a brush. And once we've done that, we're on to the tusks. So for the tusks, we're going to go for the classic colours, browns into yellowy browns into bone. Uh, so to begin with, we're going to be stippling as much of the tusks as we can with Rhinox hide. We can't get to all of them, and the teeth and the hooves are hard to get to as well, so we're going to use our regular brush to block those parts in. And once we're done with that, we're going to follow a similar process to the skin and the fur, and mix in the next colour, which is XV88. 
We're going to leave the tips of the tusks darker and blend those into lighter as they get closer to the mouth. After that, we're going to move to XV88 on its own and we're going to repeat but leave some of the previous steps showing. So basically covering a smaller area of the tusk in general and it's going to be the area closer to the mouth. Following that, we're going to jump straight into Xandra Just as it's not a huge jump and we're going to repeat the same process. As we're going up through the highlights here, we're going to be moving more towards dry brushing and less stippling. And this is kind of a good rule of thumb when you're using this process. So basically we want to make sure the brush isn't overly loaded by testing on the palette before we touch the model. And then when we do touch the model, for each highlight stage, we want to use lighter strokes in a circular or side to side sweeping motion rather than up and down dabbing motion. Once we've done with the Xandri Josh, we're going to go into a Shabti Bone for our final highlights. If you're confident, then you can try and brush the teeth with these highlight colours too, and they'll get picked out nicely. If not, then just highlight them as usual with a brush. And there we have it, most of a large model painted completely without an airbrush. Uh, this model took me probably four to five hours to get to this point, and that included a lot of stopping and starting with filming, so I think it would easily deal with around three, three hours if you just sat down and painted it, uh, which is pretty fast for a large model. Um, all of these techniques as well are transferable to other models, so you know you can use these all of these techniques on smaller models too, or even bigger models as well. Um, I hope you liked the video everyone. If you did, please give a like and subscribe to the channel, it really helps, and I'll see you next time. Bye!